Just as we encountered when we were studying forces and kinematics, in rotational motion you can connect rotational forces and rotational kinematics. Uh, this is very common to do in situations where you're talking about technology. And so let's do an example where we have to think about torques um, and then connect those torques to angular rotation and kinematics. So uh, in 1996 on the Space Shuttle Columbia, NASA was testing the idea of flying a tethered satellite. And they would spool this satellite out on a very long cable. And they spooled it out and the spool was rotating and at some point there was too much force and it broke away from the space shuttle and the tethered satellite went flying off into space. And we have very cool video of that. Let's watch that video for a minute. Okay, so we can do some calculations about that because you know enough physics now to analyze the problem. So imagine that the tether spool the big uh, spindle that the tether was originally wrapped around was initially at rest and has a mass of 300 kilograms and a radius of 0.5 meters and it's you know fixed down there in the space shuttle cargo bay. Before breaking the tether was pulled for 10 seconds with a tension of 8800 newtons. Okay, and so that's when the satellite is on the end of the tether. And what we want to know is if the spool rotates without friction, how many revolutions does it make before the tether actually breaks? Okay, so that's a problem. It doesn't look like it has a lot of information in it, but in fact it does, and we can use that information to answer the questions. Okay, so what is our goal here? So we have two steps that we're going to go through. Okay, so step one we're going to find the torque tau and then we're going to use that torque together with the information given about the spindle, about the uh, spool that the tether is wrapped around to find the angular acceleration. And then once we know the angular acceleration then we'll use rotational kinematics to answer the question which is how many times did the spindle rotate as it was unspooling up to the point where it actually broke. Okay, so let's draw some pictures of the physical situation to start with. The torque in the problem is caused by some force acting on the spindle. And so the question is, what is that? So the spindle's rotating around some center. It has some radius r, and there are two forces acting on it. There's one force, which I'll assume is at the axis, which is the force of the space shuttle acting on the uh, 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 drum of the spindle. So that's the force that actually keeping the whole thing tied to the space shuttle. It's probably some big bolt um, that's in through the size, but it's the thing that means this whole thing is actually part of the spaceship. And then there's a second force that's causing the rotation of the drum, and that force is the tension of the tether on the drum. Okay, so if I look at that free body diagram, it's uh, clear that the system is going to rotate about the center of the drum. And so in that case, if I'm thinking about torques, this force goes directly through the axis of rotation through the center of the drum there, which means its lever arm is zero, so this force produces no torque. So the only force that can produce torque in the problem is the tension. So the torque due to the tension in this problem is equal to the force, which is the tension of the tether on the drum, times the size of the lever arm, R, which in this case will be the radius of the drum that the tether is wrapped around, times the sine of the angle between the lever arm and 
the force that's being applied. In this case, as is often the case in problems that we've been looking at, that angle is 90 degrees. So this is equal to 1 because theta is 90 degrees. So I can tell you then what the torque is. It's equal to the tension in the tether, which we're told is 8,800 newtons times the radius of the drum, which is the lever arm, which we're told is 0 0.5 meters. And so we see that the torque in this problem is 4,400 newton meters. Okay? Now, if I want to find the angular acceleration, then I have to think about the object that the torque is acting on, because torque is related to angular acceleration in terms of the properties of the object. And in particular, the thing that we care about is that torque is equal to the moment of inertia of the object that's experiencing the torque times the angular acceleration alpha that that uh, object experiences. So in this case, I'm going to assume that uh, the drum that the tether is wrapped around looks like a solid cylinder rotating around its center. And I know that the moment of inertia, if I look it up in our tables for that case, for a cylinder uh, is a half times the mass times the radius squared of that cylinder. And so if I put in the properties of the drum, it's a half times the mass of the drum, which we're told is 300 kilograms. And we're told that the radius of the drum, which we already used, is 0.5 meters squared. And so overall, the moment of inertia of the drum is 37.5 kilogram meters squared. So if I now go back to the relationship between torque and angular acceleration, that tells me that angular acceleration is equal to torque divided by the moment of inertia. And I know what both of those things are. The torque, as we computed above, it whoops, is 4,400 newton meters divided by the moment of inertia, which is 37.5 kilogram meters squared. And if I numerically work that out, I get that this is 117.3 radians per second per second. So that is the angular acceleration that the drum experiences as it's unspooling from the action of the tension of the tethered satellite on the drum. Okay, so at this point, I've done what I said I was going to do in the first point, uh, part. I said I was going to use the torque to find the angular acceleration. So I looked at all the forces, I wrote a torque equation, I relayed that to angular acceleration, and now I have a numerical value. Now at this point, since I know alpha, and I know that initially it was at rest, I can turn this into a um, uh, uh, kinematics problem. Okay, and so I'm going to write out my kinematics table, uh, which we always do. So this is final theta, this is initial theta, this is final angular speed, this is initial angular speed, this is angular acceleration, and this is the time in the kinematics problem. So we don't know what the final angle is, that's basically what we're being asked to find. We're going to assume the starting point is at zero radians. We don't know what the final rotational speed is. We're told it begins at rest. So this is zero radians per second for omega initial. I just computed the angular acceleration alpha. This is 117.3 radians per second squared. And we're told that the whole problem uh, lasts for 10 seconds um, as the satellite's spooling out before it breaks, ending the problem. Okay, so in this case, I can choose any of the kinematics problems to work with, so, or kinematic equations. So the three kinematics equations are theta is equal to theta naught plus omega naught t plus a half alpha t squared. I have omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t, and I have... Um, uh, uh, omega squared 
is equal to omega naught squared plus 2 times alpha times delta theta. Now, uh, there's always more than one way to solve any, any kinematics problem. You could go through multiple kinematics equations if you wanted to. Um, in this case, uh, I can't use any of these except the first one because if I look at any of the others, there are multiple quantities that I don't know. So I'm going to start with the top one there because I uh, don't know theta. That's the thing I'm asked to find. I do know theta naught. In fact, it's zero. I do know omega naught. It's zero. I'm told we start at rest. I know alpha and I know t, so this becomes a very straightforward um, equation for the total angle that I rotate through, namely that theta is equal to a half alpha t squared. I put in the numbers, that's a half times 117.3 radians per second squared times the time, which is 10 seconds squared. If I numerically work that out, I get that there are 5,867 radians of rotation, but we're asked to express that in revolutions. So I know that 5,867 radians times one revolution per two pi radians. And if I work that out, I get that the spool makes 933.7 revolutions during the time that the drum is unspooling the tether up until the point where the satellite breaks. Okay, so that's the problem for today. Good luck doing it on your own, and we'll talk again soon.